Hello everyone, it's uh, 2 a.m. Wait, 2.01 a.m. And uh, I'm only running on caffeine and my will to live, which is diminishing, but you know, uh, the caffeine part, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna get right into this. Um, so during the semester, I had some mixed feelings about visual language. Uh, there were moments I liked and moments I disliked. It seemed like there was just another experience to put under my belt and use it for the future kind of thing. So, I know Project 1. Project 1 was a thing. I don't... Uh, it seemed more of like a bar setter for me. Um... Or as a way for the instructor to kind of like determine expectations or something like that. Um, at the same time, it was also the focus um, for demonstrating advanced knowledge of design. And um, I know it was a bit of a train wreck for me. Uh, I majorly procrastinated and had to do all of the drawings within like a week or so. And uh, it definitely showed I threw the principles of design out the window and just drew something to turn it in. That, that, that came back to bite me in the ass, honestly, if we're being, if we're being honest. Yeah. My second project, um, it was to develop an idea for uh, relations between shapes and emotions. Um, in the sense that some shapes will convey specific emotions. Um, the second project, I I wanted to do better than project one, so I didn't do everything last minute for a change. The only problem with that project is I was very much unaware of what I specifically had to do. I thought I knew what I was supposed to do, but that just... That didn't work, and it turns out I missed like half of the project. So that was fun, just doing that last second. Um, the third project focused more on personal expression, similarly to project to project two, but instead of shapes being the main focus, it was more color. The theory, um, and its connection to emotions, kinda like that, only it's color instead of shapes. Um, third time was a charm for me, thankfully. Um, after all of those projects, I actually made something without anything missing, or like any obvious problems. I mean, there were some pretty uh, noticeable problems, but nothing that like stood out exponentially in my opinion. Um, I actually made something without anything missing, and I made sure to have some neat colors to focus on tasks I needed to convey. But aside from that, everything went fairly well. Uh, turned it in on time and, you know, everything like that. So, most of the time during uh, this class, things didn't necessarily click for me. In fact, a lot of the time it was a struggle. Um, there was one instance on Project 3 where I had an idea of Viking Ritual, which just appeared out of nowhere honestly and it turned out to be my best uh, set of works in class um so that's fun most times i wasn't really lucky though for project one the entirety of my project was a struggle as it seemed never ending the setback did let me know where my boundaries are um for procrastinating and i can use that experience for future classes the fact that uh, all my classes were moved online wasn't too bad. I've used technology before and I'm pretty used to it. I had online class, uh, online class before middle school, so this wasn't much of a change. Um, I know it's been a while since before middle school, but yeah, I've gotten used to it. The most obvious process I can say was unsuccessful was waiting until the very last minute to finish a project. It just adds unnecessarily an uh, unnecessary stress on me, with diminishing returns in my art making process. And uh, after realizing the poor mistakes that I have been made, that I have made, I uh, tried to adjust my pace so I didn't have to wait till the very last minute to finish a project. 
Um, one thing about my process that did help me was my willingness to experiment a little more. In Project 3, that was definitely the most experimenting I've done for this class, where I just kind of like thought, okay, that's kind of a cool idea. Like, uh, let's set this page on fire and turn it into a bird or something like that. It was just kind of like, yeah, let's do this. Why not? It seems like a good idea. And you, yeah, that turned out good for me. Um, one thing I can absolutely relate to all three of the projects um, is that they were very stressful. Very, very stressful. With Project 1 and 2, I felt the most stress, whereas Project 3 had stress due to the fact that the previous two projects had me stressed, so it kind of just like set the stress mood for the entire class. Another way that they're all related, I'm thinking, is that they all have to do with emotions in one way or another. More specifically, Projects 2 and 3, Project 1 is a bit of a stretch, but then again, we did have our own, like, personal twist to it, so it put some emotion into it for most people. Unlike me, just kind of did it last second, but you know that's fine. Um, <laughs> one, di one difference is while they do use emotions, they convey different types of, um, they convey different ways of showing emotion. So like Project 2 had shapes, Project 3 had colors, and that's kind of fun. It's just kind of a twist on things, but it all ties back together, I'm thinking. So um, yeah, I should be able to connect the idea of procrastinating being the source of all evil for uh, my other classes, which is fun. Uh, procrastinating doesn't usually end up well for anyone. Until it does, but that rarely happens. The exact same thing is likely to happen as with any project, so, you know. Um, I can also more clearly think about emotions, so I can kind of look at the uh, pieces that, they, that I'm shown and just think, okay, what are the emotions that are being displayed here through shapes and colors? And that's gonna, that's very useful, and I can also incorporate that into future pieces. It's like, okay, how can I best incorporate these um, pieces, these emotions into my piece? So it's honestly been a while since I just made all the terms and their meanings. It's been a while since I even used them. So I may have some of these wrong, but we can start with some of the basic ones. I mean, it, it's gonna be fine, I think. Um, so, compositions are their final finished piece of art in the sense that um, it has specific arrangements. And that's, um, it's kind of like, think of like a half finished um, sketch versus a actual finished piece, like painting or something like that, that's on galleries. Um, Picture planes is something as simple as the surface you're working on, like a desk or a chair, or um, the depths of hell, you know, that works too. Um, there's open and closed compositions, and this more focuses on what you can't see as opposed to what you can see. Um, open composition has objects flowing out of the piece to where they're like, imply that they'll, that they're, I mean, outside of this canvas, um, where closed composition kind of forces all of the objects to be within the bounds of the canvas. Um, so there, there are seven elements, um, which start with line. Seven elements of our painting. Um, so line is just a basic element of design. It's not three-dimensional. It's just it's just a line. It doesn't do anything. It's just a line. Um, shapes get a little more complicated um, because they are 2D figures who are defined by edges, and these edges can be either visible or implied, meaning that they are kind of like they're not 
technically drawn out, but they're made to look like it. So form goes a step further and goes into the third dimension. Um, it makes uh, what makes an object 3D, so it adds a third layer to a simple shape. So color, it helps us establish an overall tone of the piece. With brighter colors, you get brighter tone, and with darker colors, you typically more get, get more depressed tones. Um, and this idea closely connects with the idea of color theory, in which we don't have to know much about colors, but we still feel the emotions they're meant to convey. And that's really useful, so you don't have to be a Picasso to know what emotions are at play here. On a similar line, texture is meant to be surface quality of object. Now this can be, um, this can be like text, not text, like colors along with various shapes. Just kind of stretched out to give an object um, its texture. So, uh, positive and negative space. This is uh, what artists want you to see and what you notice first when you look at a piece. So positive space, what artists want, negative space is what you actually see. It's kind of like, kind of like dating, it's like dating on the internet. It's like you got, you got uh, the profile picture, but when you actually meet a person, it's kind of just like, oh, okay, wow, this doesn't look at all like it. But, uh, not really. It's just kind of, just, yeah. Um, value is a simple idea of lightness and darkness. That's all it is. It's like, some things are light, some things are dark. Not, not that complex. So, we have some design principles. Um, seven more to go through then. And then you can stop listening to me ramble. So the first principle is pattern, which is systematic repetition of a motive. Now that's kind of just like, it's just kind of like repeating. It's just, it's some along the line of texture, kind of, in the sense that it's, um, repetition makes texture in a way. Um, contrast, um, is a second principle. Uh, which is dissimilar properties shown creating a visual distinction. Now that's a little bit easier. It's a little more easier with the sense that you can kind of just like make a whole of opposites are like easy example of um, contrast, so like black and white, those are great examples of contrast. So moving on to balance, the distribution of the objects and their weights in the canvas or a piece. And this can be seen in the fact that like you have like a big object or heavy object on one side of the, of the uh, piece and not a whole lot on the other side. That would be an imbalanced um, an imbalanced piece of art. In the sense that it's more leaning towards one side center of the mask in that sense. Um, next up is proportion. And proportion is the size of elements in relation to each other. So, um, it's kind of like, think, uh, you want a big circle, but you want another circle in the distance that's also the same size. That circle is going to be smaller than the circle closer to you because distance and proportion, but you have to be um, consistent with the proportions because they're still technically the same size. So that's what that means. Um, emphasis. Um, that occurs when some aspects of a piece stand out more than others. Um, this can be something like an object or even colors. It's pr pretty simple, I think. Um, so, similar to that, we have harmony, and harmony happens when elements are arranged specifically. 
and it gives them more of like a concrete finished feel like everything's supposed to be there there isn't really anything bad standing out if that makes sense staying out like a sword thumb kind of thing and uh last but not least we have rhythm you ain't got rhythm you ain't got a piece um rhythm occurs when the viewer's eye is constantly moving when they look at a piece so um certain objects will direct the viewer's eye in certain directions and you have to be sure to not accidentally just have that eye fly off the page unless that's what you're going for so um a rhythm is a great way of doing that just making sure that it constantly is on the move and yeah then you'll do fine but uh anyway this is more than enough for me rambling uh, i'm gonna let you guys go i need sleep because it's about 2 30 in the morning and uh yeah i apologize for any terrible video or audio but you know um it is what it is i suppose but yeah thank you guys for a great semester and i hope to see you guys sooner rather than later so see ya here.